Thank you, Bea. Vanessa, the stage is floor. So thank you so much um, for the invitation. And I'm really looking forward to telling you about how important libraries are in moving open education and making the case for that based on some evidence on looking at what European libraries are doing in higher education in supporting open education um, today. So I'm director of Spark Europe and we're really looking forward um, to doing a lot more work in this space. As you know, I think there are many uh, hundreds, if not thousands of librarians doing a lot of great work on open education in the United States, for example. But in Europe, um, it's a different case also because there are other agendas like open science that have, have overshadowed open education in, in some cases. But let me tell you what, uh, what we know today. Um, so I'm going to tell you about a survey that we conducted um, so the main uh, goal um, was to, to gain insights into um, open education practices within academic libraries uh, in higher education in Europe. And so ultimately to inform also the network that we have, we have created and are, are currently building um, to strengthen open education and increase OERs in higher education institutions and their libraries across Europe. So the survey was issued at the end of last year, beginning of this year. Um, it, it, it was the first time a uh, survey of its kind. Uh, we had 28 European countries uh, responding and they were really only from higher edu education institutions and their libraries. So let me just go straight into some of the results. So we, uh, we wanted to find out about policy and practice and if we looked at um, policy, we wanted to find out how far were libraries also engaged in the conceptualization of open education policy within their institutions or even on a national level. So the trend that we saw, uh, although it's on a, on a small cohort, cohort, but still, um, was that um, institutional policies were part of a larger over overarching policy, um, one that usually encompasses uh, more open, so like open access, open science, uh, other open strategies and open goals of the institution. Um, we had actually 27 reported um, open education policies, if you know the um, OER world map, and they're also collecting policies, they ha have far less than these in Europe, so we're looking forward to adding those to the world map. But um, we found that 11 libraries were involved in the conception of those 27 um, and uh, libraries were, were involved in actually three quarters of those that were actually standalone policies. So, so they were really also instrumental in trying to push for um, a, a standalone open education policy really focused on, on moving that agenda forward. What you can see here in the slide is that the most uh, with policies in place uh, were from uh, Greece, Spain and, and the UK so far. So what about the organisational context? So how is open education managed? Um, and I'm going to particularly focus on libraries uh, next, but first of all, um, we found that only 20% had an internal task force with an OE focus. Um, and if they had a task force in place, uh, usually there was a policy, often those task forces were set up to establish a policy or to implement uh, policies institutionally wide. Then there was also a positive correlation we found between uh, those uh, offering services and those with uh, high numbers of students, which makes sense, and also those with um, large advocacy activities, so engaging in change and communicate, com communicating on uh, open education and OER, um, there was a relation between that and also a high number of students, so the need for uh, open education uh, being higher. But there was no correlation between the services offered and the FTE, so if you also think about the libraries, libraries have, have been working on very um, tight budgets for many years now and they've also been working in the areas of open access and open science also on very constrained budgets but they are really uh, reinventing themselves and working um, with 
the same FTEs, but providing new services, and that includes open education. So what about library leadership? Are they uh, serious contenders to really help lead uh, on open education in an academic institution? Of those who responded, 50% take the lead in open education or OER in their institutions. And seven of the nine libraries involved in conceiving an OE policy, they were also taking lead in advancing OER in their institution and also were offering uh, more activities uh, than others, which makes sense. We also wanted to know from where is the leadership happening within the library? Uh, many libraries have a teaching and learning department of sorts. Uh, logically, it was being led from those, uh, those departments and but in 10 cases the scholarly communication section which is uh, usually responsible then for open access or open science so linking it to the openness uh, that was also serving um, as a as a place for uh, oer activities but as we've heard from previous speakers libraries can't do this uh, alone it's uh, enabling open education across the institution you must be working and collaborating with many other departments across the institution so we also asked libraries who are you working with either regularly or on an ad hoc ad hoc basis and here you'll see no surprises that um, most effort is going into uh, advocating still in a in an immature um uh a period really with open education in academic institutions. So really advocating for change amongst academic departments, amongst faculty, um, uh, also to uh, e-learning and distance education pedagogues and teaching and learning centers. IT, of course, you're collaborating because you're working with them to uh, implement uh, some of those tools uh, and resources. Um, and then, of course, you're collaborating with others to deliver on uh, legal services with the legal departments or communication uh, offices. Um, if you look at this slide here, it shows the collaboration um, also on a regular or ad hoc basis. So the regular is in blue and the ad hoc is orange and green is no. Um, so you see that actually there's, there's more ad hoc uh, collaboration rather than regular apart from um, with the vice rectorate. So that's obviously a more um, uh, stable, regular uh, collaboration, probably not just on open education, but also on other things. Um, but you do see, again, because this is still in flux and still developing, um, it's not a consistent activity where there's regular communication as much, although there is still quite some, but there's more ad hoc uh, we see at the moment. Now, what kinds of services are libraries providing in open education? For many, many years, the strengths of libraries are really in information literacy, in um, educating researchers, uh, students, uh, faculty on how to navigate access to information and knowledge. Um, and also uh, within that, uh, educating them about the potentials of new ways of publishing either for research through open access or through open education. So you see their strengths, they taking a lead role above all in information literacy, including open education. Uh, the blue is the lead role, green is the supportive role and, and orange is none. You also see many libraries um, providing advice on copyright, which they've also been uh, doing uh, to support their researchers. Um, for uh, research outputs um, and training and education. They've been supporting students uh, and teachers alike for many years. And of course, uh, librarians have great strengths in how to locate uh, research through discovery services. Although there is still quite a, quite a number of challenges to get access to those uh, OERs uh, through discovery, but they have strengths in, in that area. And, but what you see if uh, when we asked uh, libraries if they were also providing services in participatory design, if you look to the very right bars or course pack, course pack provision or OER 
co-creation. There's a lot less leadership. There's more collaboration with others on that. Uh, there are, of course, some guiding lights and some innovators who are doing some work in that. But as you see, um, this is really starting to grow um, and it's not, uh, it's, it's not necessarily a strength yet in the library world, but they are uh, taking on a supportive role in some of the more creative uh, design um, collaborative functions. We were also curious about, so as compared to the services provided, what skills are available to really support OER? And you generally see that the majority are providing support in an area where they have the full or many skills. So full set of skills on the right hand side are blue, many skills are green. Um, institutions had higher skill levels in areas where they work together with other departments, obviously, to provide those services. Um, what we saw though, um, although many libraries are pr providing advice on copyright, they did, a, a number of them uh, reported lacking a full skill set on copyright. So then working together with legal departments and others on that. Um, and again, um, if you look at the skill set related to participatory design or data curation uh, as well and course back provision, that's uh, also a lot less developed, uh, which matches with the, the service provision uh, that I mentioned previously. And technical support, um, the support is often uh, drawn from outside of the library unless they have technical uh, competencies uh, within the library. So what we also asked about was what do libraries see um, as opportunities for them to engage in open education? What are the benefits? So of course, relating to the quality and access and reuse of information, that they're helping eliminate barriers to education and increasing equity. I think many of these arguments are uh, you're aware of, uh, but still it was good to hear um, also from this community, uh, that it's of course improving also the quality of education and access to it. But one of the challenges, but and yet also an opportunity is the change in culture within the institution. So an institution becoming more open um, as part of other uh, open policies, as I've already mentioned earlier. And then there's a rise of the importance of the library taking leadership in open education. So great opportunities there. Um, and of course, the need to collaborate more with other departments means that there's a much deeper collaboration with those departments and connection with the library. Um, and of course, there are some individual libraries who are even involved in national policy development, um, which they applaud. Um, and of course, through the, uh, the new uh, work in this, in this sector, um, it's also upskilling um, uh, staff uh, amongst some libraries. But of course, there are also many challenges. I think over 60 challenges were mentioned. Uh, one being the lack of an institutional or national policy um, that can really boost and back uh, the, the work that you're doing and calling for. The lack of staff capacity and funding for the creation of OERs and the insufficient relevant skills and know-how. Although we saw a number of strong skills in the other slides, still there, there is a lack, clearly. And then if we go to the culture and the environment, the speed of change and mindsets um, is slow. There's also in some cases a lack of institutional leadership for open education and to move things forward. Um, and there's also a lack of understanding of the benefits of, of open education by senior management. And um, lastly, challenges in the ability to influence teaching staff uh, to go OE or uh, produce OER. And there's also a challenge to really understand the interplay between the professionals internally. What I mentioned earlier, there are some real benefits to be had to, to understand that, but if you don't, uh, this is a very uh, large obstacle to make progress if you really don't understand how that collaboration works. 
And then related to uh, access and reuse of that content, of course, copyright and licensing uh, is still a barrier to access and reuse. We really need to share more good practices internationally. Um, and that's what we're trying to do with the European Open Education uh, Librarian Network that Spark Europe is leading. And then also improving the discovery of OER is still a challenge. And of course, selling the quality in OER. So we okay. came up with a few recommendations based on what we've learned. Um, I cut out some of the other results on funding, but let me just address those quickly here. So what's really key is to, to get things kicked off, um, is to have some seed funding for projects to kickstart efforts, to earmark some of the li library budgets for open education to get things done, and then also uh, to consider establishing perhaps grant programs to support the creation of OERs amongst faculty. That's the ideal scenario. Regarding collaboration, what's really key is to invest more in understanding the interplay, which I just talked about between professionals and stakeholders locally and externally. And to get things started off is develop a stakeholder management plan that can really help you forward as understanding those interplays better. And as regarding leadership um, in libraries for open education, I'm calling on libraries, don't be shy. You can also take a leadership role if open education is really not being driven forward. And you can work on the back of some of your other open agendas. Um, and many peers are taking leadership, so try to connect with them. What's really necessary is that we still need to advocate our efforts because teaching management, teaching staff and management still don't somehow see the benefits uh, the effort that it takes for them. Um, so uh, libraries are good at that. They can use their uh, information literacy tools for that or their other advocacy tools on open. And I think what's also important is to work and collaborate with the other departments to identify who are those champions in your institution. So identify them and equip them with some uh, uh, some messages, some tools that they can then share amongst peers. And then, of course, also um, libraries can also collaborate on either initiating or developing an open education policy, either an institutional one or working together with others on a national one, because there's still a great shortage of um, open education policies. My last recommendations here are, so relating to um, OER, um, to really work on engaging with others in the co-creation co of open education resources, um, also to help grow what's already available, even if it's also library resources that you have that you make, in the, make those open, uh, uh, openly available, they are OER, uh, uh, and um, what's important is for you to identify the skills within your library and then upskill by partner, partnering more with your, in, uh, with your departments in the institution or externally and join up with others. And last but not least, which is really an easy one, is try to locate where and what OERs are being created within your institution and then try to optimize accessibility and monitor the growth of such resources over time. Um, so to build on those good practices. So I think lastly, I think I'd like to say, um, uh, One minute with left. The, sorry? One minute left. That's perfect. No, so, um, so with the UNESCO OER recommendation, um, libraries uh, are also going to be contributing to see how um, we can build capacity on open education amongst uh, libraries in Europe and also to roll that out across our institutions to build on policy. Uh, we need to continue our research to understand um, good practices, to share good practices also uh, throughout this network. Um, we need to advocate for OER and through champions and to really showcase those, uh, those great voices for open education. 
And we also need to think about sustaining how, how do we sustain open education, the infrastructure that we are building now, and it remains a public good. So if you're in Europe and you're, you're in a library and you're not yet part of our network, I'm reaching out to you, please do join us, send us an email and join the network. Tell us also how libraries can help you implement OER. And if you haven't already read the survey report, this is the link. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Unfortunately, we are out of time, uh, so we don't really have time for questions. I, th that was actually a notification for one minute. So I'm sorry if you didn't hear me about the five minute warning. No, but, I didn't, uh, sorry. Yeah, so I, I would like to, well, there is actually, there is a comment from uh, Michelle Vilmes. She's based at the University of Cape Town in South Africa. And, and it's, uh, you know, she says that a lot of those, lot of, lot of it, what you just mentioned really resonates within the context, within the South African context. And I think that Michelle, if you have additional questions for Vanessa, I do encourage you to get in touch with Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa, you also have the space on OEG Connect for your session. So I do encourage you to upload your session slides there and continue engaging with uh, attendees throughout the week. So okay. thank you very much for this important work and, and everything that Spark Europe is doing to advance open education. And I would just like to very briefly, so you can stop the recording now, uh, Bea.